In our last video we talked about adding particles onto the stage. In the case of this movie we have a robot who's dropping cogs. The cogs are the particles. In this video we'll be talking about how to make those cogs move, making sure that they're positioned relative to other elements on the stage, and making them move and be positioned exactly where we want. So at the end of last time what we had was a series of cogs being added up until we hit the maximum number of cogs. So they're being placed right here which is where the registration mark for the robot is at that point in time. And they're all, as you can see, being stacked on top of the robot. That's what you would expect. We want to change that. What we want to do is we want to have them appear behind the robot. So in our robot class we have an add event listener which is firing 24 times per 24 times per second there's 24 frames per second is our frame rate so that's how many cogs are being added every second now that seems a little bit excessive you can see how closely they were stacked together if we want to space this out the enter frame event is not going to be what we want to use we're going to use a timer similar to the JavaScript set timeout. So we need to import that. Import flash.events.timer event is the new kind of event that we want. And we're going to import flash.utils.timer. There's an actual timer object that we're going to import. We want to create a variable that will hold this timer private var, we'll call our timer Timmy, and it's equal to a new timer, and it's got two arguments, one's required, one is not. The delay is the number of milliseconds you want to wait between calling the timer. So let's go for 500, half a second. If we put nothing in for the second argument, it means it's going to keep running forever and ever and ever. However, this timer will not start to run until we tell it that we want to start. That is the method to begin the timer. If we want to do something when the timer hits its 500 millisecond time frame, then we have to add a listener to it. Same way we added the listener to with the enter frame to the object, except this, this event listener is being added to the timer. That's the one we want, and we're going to call the same function, add cog. Now, add cog down here, you'll notice, was waiting for an event. Right here, it was looking for an event. We're going to look for a timer event now. So it's a different type of event, but same sort of syntax. All right, this means now that every half second, we're going to be adding those to the stage. Much more reasonable time frame to be adding them. But we still have them stacked on top of the robot. They're still kind of high up on the robot. They're not down on the ground. So we'll fix that. All right. Here, where we're adding them. The X position, that's fine. Add it right where the robot is. The Y position, we want it further down. So let's Let's add 80 to that, see what happens. Okay, so it's down near the bottom of the robot. That's a great place to start adding them, but then let's make them drop from that point onto the ground, and let's put them behind the robot. So the behind the robot part, we'll do that first. We're going to call the swap children. So this is our robot class. So we're talking about Robbie. His stage is the stage that's shared by everything. On the stage, we want to swap the depths of two objects, the robot and the cog. The cog is the highest thing because we just added it, so it's on the top layer. We're going to swap our robot with that layer. If we do that every single time, robot is always going to be the highest thing on the stage, so it's always going to be in front of everything. 
only problem is we put the robot on the main timeline through the visual interface if we put the robot on the stage at that point what we are doing is we're actually adding it to the main timeline not to the stage so we are going to say that this dot stage so the robot stage is the same as the stage for the cogs we're going to call the add child method and we're going to put in this now the cool thing about flash is I can call add child 50 times on one object every time I call it if the object is already on the stage at some other point it's going to be moved from there to the new position so it could be inside of a movie clip number one and then I call add child for the stage it's going to be moved from movie clip one onto the stage All right so now both things are on the stage if we run this we're adding the cogs they're in behind the robot is always being shifted in front of everything else okay great there's that now to make these guys drop all right they have a position a starting position which is 80 pixels below the registration part point for the robot but we want them to drop down so they're going to need a speed to move down when they slide down we want them to stop so we need a starting point we need an ending point we need a speed starting point not a problem that's what this cog dot y value is that's our starting point let's go into the robot cog class inside here we have number of cogs mac cog i added two new properties one for speed one for drop the speed this value we're going to use that to decide if we're moving left or we're moving right and we'll also use it for the speed of our rotation since our robot already has a speed why don't we just borrow that that's going to be my starting speed for all the cogs so cog dot speed is going to be equal to this dot s s is my speed for the robot speed if i look in the robot cog inside here there it is i added the variable sp and i added a get and a set function called speed so i'm passing in the robot speed whether it's positive or negative that value is going to be passed in here it's going to replace the value of zero and that's going to be how fast our robot is going to move left or right okay so we have a an event, enter frame event calling a function move just down here at the bottom and we are going to say that our cog its y position or sorry its x position we're going to move left and right is going to be equal to itself plus the speed which we got from the robot we're going to do the same thing with the rotation I'm going to make this guy rotate that many degrees so if it's moving four pixels it'll rotate four degrees if it's moving five pixels it'll rotate five degrees and there looks like nothing's happening but these guys are actually following along in behind the robot because we haven't made them drop down yet so I want to make them drop and up here I have a variable called drop so right now it's just going to be one pixel per frame and there they are you can see they're starting to drop in behind and they continue to move on off the left and off the right of the stage we're gonna have to remove them to add a little bit of acceleration to make this look like it's running a little bit faster as they fall down they get faster I'm gonna say this dot drop times equals 1.1 so the speed down is getting faster as it moves along 
the speed for the rotation and the x moving to the left or the right. We want that to actually slow down so they don't stay completely behind the robot. So let's say that if the speed is less than negative 0 0.2 or the speed is greater than 0 0.2 so that's kind of our min and max values as long as it's so if it's moving to the left it's a negative speed if it's moving to the right it's a positive speed as long as it's greater than 0 0.2 pixels per frame we are going to continue to reduce it this dot speed times equals 0.99 so every frame is going to be 99% of the speed that it had the previous frame. Alright, so they're accelerating, and they are slowing down. Let's make them stop. Right here, so let's make them actually stop when they, they hit kind of a maximum, so it looks like they're hitting the ground. So if this dot y is greater than for now I'll just say 320, then I want to set the drop to zero. Stop falling. There we go. So now they're all stopping and you can see that they're rolling slower and moving slower because the value SP, the speed, we were multiplying that by 99% until it gets down to a minimum value of 0.2. All right, last part. We want to remove these guys, and they're off the stage. So our last part, we will check to see if this dot x is less than zero, where this dot x is greater than this dot stage dot stage width. So we're off the left or we're off the right. Either one. We want to remove the event listener, which was our event dot enter frame for calling the move function. We've got to get rid of that. We don't want that to be running in the background after we've removed this guy. actually remove him from the stage and if we've done that we're going to say that this guy is gone so we're going to decrement the number of cogs I'll run that there so you can see that they disappear as they get close to the side so as the registration point gets there. Now some of them won't make it. Some of them will, or they'll take a very long time to get to the sides. So we end up with some that are scattered around on the stage. And that is a particle system.